Hi, welcome. You are watching Value Based FM Video Blog. In short, BBFM Video Blog. My name is Stephen Lee, and I'm the author of Value Based First Investment, which has received praises internationally. A book on how facilities practitioners like you can deliver competitive advantage to organization. If you are new to this video blog, just to let you know, I am committed to put up a new blog on how FMS can add value to their organization every first Wednesday of the month. In the last VBFM video blog, I share on the first six out of twelve common systems processes in an integrated management system. In this blog, I will continue to share on the remaining six common system processes. Before that, just a quick recap on the last video blog. I shared the six common system processes, which are one, the FM planning, policy, objectives, risk, and resilience. Number two, regulatory requirement management. Third, the stakeholders' needs and requirement for facility services. Fourth, the responsibilities, accountabilities, and authorities. Fifth, management review, and the number six system process is the operational processes. Now, here are the remaining six system processes. Start with number seven. Performance Evaluation and Improvement The purpose for this process is to review and evaluate the actual facility service performance against the set level of services to determine if correction or corrective action is needed and also to assess opportunities for improvement. Number 8 Competence, training, and awareness. This process enables the team members to be equipped with the necessary knowledge and skills to perform their jobs and also to equip the team members to keep pace and be updated such as the new or amended legal requirements, new technologies, so and so forth, so that the team members are well equipped to perform their task well. Number nine. Supplier relationship management, or you may also uh, call it service providers relationship management. And this process guide FM to partner well uh, with your vendor, contractor, service provider in achieving the set level of service. It helps set an intentional, pleasant and collaborative working relationship between FM and your service provider. Alright, next, the number 10, Documents and Record Control. This process provides consistent practice on creating, storing, retrieving, distributing and returning and disposing the documented information. This is rather straightforward but it's very important so that you know where are these information are being kept. Now, go on to number 11. Uh, yes, 
internal or this. And this process guides the preparation and set up for internal audit and the tasks that need to be performed so that each and every of the internal auditors they are guided with a consistent uh, steps on what needs to be done. Now, the final uh, process number 12 and important to FM operations is the uh, proactive, reactive, corrective processes. These uh, processes will guide on both the planned and unplanned maintenance. Um, the processes will provide guide to achieve consistent practice in developing, implementing, changing the processes such as preventive maintenance, facilities, interruption, recovery, corrective maintenance. So, now you have an overview of the 12 common system processes in an integrated operating manual. In the next coming video, I will be sharing on my upcoming book set to be published by end May and also at the same time to be ready for my speaking in a FM conference. I will let you know the title of my fourth book aim to add value to the practice of effective and efficient FM. For those of you who are new to this value-based FM video blog, if you find it helpful to you, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this VBFM channel and hit the bell icon so that you will be informed of new blogs that has been uploaded. So I look forward to sharing with you on how you can be a value add and business advantage to your organization first Wednesday next month. Goodbye.